Our traditional ways of tackling social problems aren't always working. You may have drunk fair trade coffee. You may have bought toiletries from Unilever. You might have bought your clothes from Patagonia. You might even watch the news on the BBC. These are all hybrid organisations which are outside the conventional models of market, state and non-profit. Hybrid organisations offer so much potential in helping to tackle social problems, but in order to understand that potential, we really need to analyse rigorously how hybrid organisations can contribute and in what particular circumstances. We have identified three types of hybrid organisational structure which offer different constraints and incentives around profit and purpose. The first is encapsulated interest where profit making and the production of social purpose are entirely aligned. The second is hearts and hands. This is where those who lead the organisation fundamentally have a social purpose but they are using profit-making mechanisms in order to achieve that purpose. The third we call the restrained hand. This is where there are explicit legal or structural constraints on the organisation, which prohibits in some sense a total concentration on profit-making. What we really want to try and understand is what sort of hybrid organisations work best in what situations in order to create social impact. What we are predicting is there are particular circumstances when one is relevant and others are not, and vice versa. So for instance, let's take a, an organisation that wants to create a social innovation or social benefit. Our encapsulated interest model is not going to work very well because it's not clear that profit and uh, social benefit is in the first instance aligned. And the challenge for policy makers, but also for people who are interested in creating their own organisations for social benefit, is to choose the right organisational form for a particular context. 